I read her bio before, but I'm going to give her her moment again and read it again, is Miss Tomisa Leiden. Tomisa hey. is here. And so Tomisa is, if you missed it before, she is the author of Smart Living for Seniors, How to Make the Best of the Rest is a concierge realtor with Remax and Excalibur, Remax Excalibur in Arizona, and the CEO of Leiden Senior Pathways. She's a frequent, frequent speaker on, so, on blah, 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 blah. let me take a breath. <laughs> She's a frequent speaker on senior real estate and relocation at NASDAQ, Harvard, the Harvard Club of Boston, Coca-Cola, Mercedes-Benz, West Point, and she's been on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox TV news and talk shows. Tomisa is a real estate specialist for seniors and a smart sizing expert. She provides comprehensive one-stop relocation planning, move management, and real estate services so seniors can enjoy the next chapter, the next living chapter of life by creating a strategic plan for themselves. So Tomisa, Thank you so much for joining us here on Small Business Saturday. Shout out. Thank and you. What have I not said about you? Oh, my motto is if it's not fun, I'm done. And so here I am with you having fun today. And I have had fun and the great privilege of sharing my message and my mission on stages with Caitlyn Jenner. Yes, mm -hmm. that Caitlyn. Suzanne yes. Summers and Martha Stewart, among other celebrities that are aging and embracing the fact that our ge greatest generation and the boomers, which is yep. what I am, need <laughs> to strategically plan for that next living chapter of life. If, if you don't, it's going to catch up with you and there could be things you don't want to deal with. And I've been through that. <laughs> mm. Because there's, there's this myth, I think, of when you start getting older, that everything else stops. I, I always say, a friend of mine said one time to me, and I use this comment all the time, aging is not an option, but getting old is. It's all in your heart and your head that you start aging and you don't have to do that. You can just take this next chapter and live it to the fullest. My mother always said, you only live once. If you want it, you can have it and you can't take it with you. So with yeah. those three things in mind, might as well enjoy it to the fullest, to the end. <laughs> yes, because I don't know about you, but even though my chronological age is, is you know, keeps climbing every year, that's how that happens, right? But yeah. I still feel like I'm a teenager. I still feel like I'm, I'm, you know, ready to take on the world. Well, Alicia, I quit aging I think mentally at age 18, I'm 67 years old and I consider myself a recycled teenager because I did quit aging in my mind at 18. <laughs> my my 30, uh, 38 and 42 year old sons are more mature than I am and I am okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because when we start thinking old, because that's one of the, the things that, that um, in my book too that I wrote down, is when we start thinking old, we start getting old. True, that's a true fact. And why I started doing what I do is I watched my parents in their late 70s and as they graduated into the 80s, just begin losing the vibrance of their life. They quit doing things, yeah. they quit going places. They just sat on the sofa watching TV, holding hands. My mm -hmm. sister and I used to joke that one of these days we're gonna fly in and go visit them and open the door and they're gonna be sitting there really passed away, but still holding hands oh, yeah. on the sofa and the TV still going. But I mean, they, lost their, <laughs> they lost their vibrance. And my dad had health issues. The writing was on the wall. We needed to handle things like that uh, mm -hmm. with how they were going to age and what they, how they saw themselves aging in the next 10, 20, 30 years, even if they have or have not, um, health issues. My dad had a lot of health issues. He had heart disease, COPD, lung disease, kidney disease, and diabetes. My mother, bless her heart, had Alzheimer's. So at the young age of 70, she started deteriorating mentally with Alzheimer's. And it was imperative 
to work with them and get a plan going. But you know how parents are. They don't want to hear about it. They're the adults. They're the parents. They got it all under control. Mm -hmm. And we hope that it all goes well. But we as kids want the best for them. And I think back about the years when I was a kid and they wanted to have that birds and the bees conversation. I, I didn't want any part of that either. Get at. But I, you know, sometimes I look back and go, maybe that would have been a good choice to listen. But <laughs> anyway, I digress on that one. But my mom um, ended up alone, home alone with Alzheimer's. I got that urgent call from my sister hanging out at the pool, having fun. My sister calls to say, hey, you got to get to mom and dad right now. Well, she lived in Dallas. I lived in San, uh, Phoenix. My folks were in San Antonio. She's much closer than I am. But there were storms everywhere and streets were flooded. The airports in Dallas were closed. So I jumped the next flight out of Phoenix and I enter my mom's house at 1135 p.m. It's pitch black because San Antonio was powerless, had yeah. no power in the city. And there she is. I'm looking for her and she's curled up in a fetal position crying for her husband. And she is deep into late stages of Alzheimer's. And I knew right then yeah. that I had to help my parents make the best of the rest. They didn't yeah. want to talk about anything, but they they kind of forced me to write the book, Smart Living for Seniors, How to Make the Best of the Rest, yeah. because I didn't want to see anybody, family or individuals go through this. It's emotional, physical, fina uh, fi definitely financial and draining. And if we can help them move forward with a plan to live great, then yeah. why not? But I have the 60-40 rule. And that okay. is when parents are in their 60s and the kids are in their 40s, it's time to let the conversations begin about how the parents see themselves living. And if something happens, what's going to take place so that you don't end up in a crisis. And that's what my family did. We made yeah. all the mistakes and we had a crisis. So it can be avoided with a plan. But if someone's in crisis right now, what what are some things that they should be looking for? as help? Well, first of all, every city has uh, an area on aging agency. It's um, triple A, basically, but it's the area of aging on the area agency on aging. And so you can contact that in your state, you can Google it, um, wherever, whatever city, and find out what needs you may have, uh, that they may have programs or, or some help. There's a lot of help out there. And there is, the senior industry is kind of difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. And one of my missions has been to put a senior resource library together, which I'm working across the country to bring in industries, brands, entrepreneurs, uh, counsel, con cons consultants, coaches, anyone that has uh, any information or services or products for seniors to have mm -hmm. that on one platform so that seniors can go to that library and find help they need across the country. So yeah. anyone that's interested in that. It's almost like they're forgotten, you know, like they help build a country, help build economies, help do all this stuff. And then they get to a certain age and, and. You know, Alicia, you're right. It's they're the greatest generation and they deserve the respect and dignity um, at this time in life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, as we've discovered in this pandemic, a lot of them are still living in that large high maintenance home where they're consumed with the time, effort and energy and the money to contain and maintain it. So it's very important at, at some point for the family, if they have family members around, to sit and have a conversation with the senior and say, hey, here are some options for living in a smaller, more manageable space, mm -hmm. maybe even safer from falling hazards. Falling is the number one accident among seniors. And the statistics on that is horrible because within 12 years, I mean, within 12 months, one of two uh, seniors that fall, one of them will die because they start to decline. Mm -hmm. And that's a national stat that we can avoid if we can 
prevent falls. So safer environments, more social environments where they can thrive and, yeah. and have people to laugh with, talk to, oh, dance. Yeah. And, and keep the young, keep that brain and the excitement young and, and, and <laughs> happening. You have to keep that going. And if I couldn't laugh and dance, I mean, there's not a lot of places to go to anymore unless you're in a mask. Uh, but <laughs> luckily, we're, luckily, we're not on lockdown. But I tell you, I just dance around my house because that keeps me happy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if I can't laugh, I don't know what I would do. But laughing, dancing, uh, reading jokes. A lot of people like to meditate. I can't sit still long enough to do that. Uh, <laughs> at some point, I may, I may do that at some point. But there's so much social energy that you can connect to if you just reach out and try. But those people, uh, those seniors, especially that are have been kind of on lockdown or stuck at home in these large homes during this pandemic are finding that they're getting depressed, they're mm. isolated, they're lonely, and we have to get a handle on that and start helping them out. So if you live by a senior or you yeah. know a senior, reach out, call them, go visit them if you can, because it's it can get lonely out there. And we're oh, finding yeah. that out in all ages now as we stay home and kind of endure right. the pandemic. Because they they actually in Florida here, they just allowed uh, visitors again into senior facilities um, to be able to go visit because it's been, it's been they, tough. They have been on lockdown because our senior in, uh, demographics are the high risk. Mm -hmm. And when they're in a community, uh, depending on how the outbreak uh, affected that community, they're kind of on a lockdown. And it's been sad to watch people just go up to the window and hug and, you know, mm -hmm. kiss on their loved, yeah, loved yeah. ones. But, you know, those are the options they have for living uh, in smaller spaces is going to a senior community, whether it's independent, assisted or memory care. But there are also other options in smaller homes where if you need health care, you can sell the large home, get the equity out of that, buy a smaller home, and then you have funds to provide in-home care. care to take mm -hmm. care of you. So my mission is to help people realize there are options. So from consultation to close of escrow and everything in between, I help them realize what, because of how we assess what their needs are, all the things that they have options to, to make a choice with. And a lot of people don't know there are choices. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's getting rid of all that stuff they have. But stuff is just stuff. Uh, when you, what people call downsize, I call smart size. When you do that, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> really, yeah, it's smart sizing. It's the smartest thing you could ever do. When yeah. you do that, you really do. I work on capturing their essence as we go through their home to take and pick, choose what's going to fit in their smaller space. I want a story. I want to hear their story about some of the items they love. And we make sure we capture their essence and move it with them. So mm -hmm. when people feel like they're it's doom and gloom, death and dying. If they had to move out of the home they've been in for 20, 30, 40 years, they have to get a different mindset and realize they're going to be safer, be more social, have interaction with others. Their essence is going to be with them and they will really gain more freedom and independence than they can even imagine. That is beautiful. And I know that there are people out there that are struggling with what you went through and it's not necessary to, to do that and so i just want to remind everyone the agency that you're talking about she, she um tomisa mentioned the aaa which is the area sorry area agency on aging was that it yes in your city in your state to reach out do a google search and reach out to them do they they provide medical um you know like information on how to take care of medical they needs. have they have almost every aspect of what your needs could be um right down to during the pandemic they had a phone number to call here locally where if you needed food you got food they'd bring you food if you need in home care they're going to help you get from different price levels some of them are you know zero fees to whatever someone can afford but mm -hmm. those agencies are great and i tell you if anybody uh is listening to this and wants to be in that senior resource library they can text the word smart s-m-a-r-t mm -hmm. to, to 602 456 
1976 and I can get you all the information you need on that because that's going to be such a helpful tool in one location for seniors to find out about anything and everything. Okay, uh, let me write that in again. The number to text is 602-456-1976. So this is a resource that you guys can get from Tomisa. She is going to share with you how um, how to get a hold of the things that you need for seniors. If your parents are, are aging, they're elderly, and they, they're having some challenges, text in to Tomisa in order to get the resource guide that you need um, to help, you know, to find the help that you need. Right. We can get them and steer it in the right direction because that's important. Yeah. And it's, it's all about youthful minds over aging matters and looking at it in all different aspects of where you are in life, where, what your health situations are, it can all still be living the best, uh, the, making the best of the rest. Of the and, rest. and actually size matters, but resize matters more when it comes to <laughs> where you live and how you are, how that environment affects you, your health and your situation. So listen, this is a small business community. All of us here in the small business community, uh, if you you have aging parents, this, Tomisa is in our community. So reach out to Tomisa and really um, take advantage of the resources that she has that she's offering to you because this is a woman that took what she was doing. She had a love for real estate mm -hmm. and niched it in an area where where people have kind of forgotten about um, our seniors because we, we, we're we so busy building our own lives that we forget about our parents yeah. until something happens. Yes. And Alicia, um, if you haven't, or if your listeners have not had that urgent phone call saying they need to get from their town to somebody else's town immediately to take care of uh, an aging parent or loved one, if it hasn't happened yet, it will. So plan for that. It's prepare in advance. Uh, let your desires be known. Acknowledge your safety concerns and never give up that youthful heart and mind. But uh, if anyone wants to go to my website, it's Tamisa.com. It's just as simple as that. If you can spell the word, <laughs> spell the name, you got it covered. You got it but, covered. But planning in advance is critical and key to making it the best of the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and tell us how you came to speak at all these amazing places. Like what led you into speaking at NASDAQ and the Harvard Club of Boston and Coca-Cola and Mercedes-Benz and West Point? Because that's exciting. That, that has been very exciting. And I've been privileged to be invited to share this message because seniors are kind of drifting into the background. And we're just like you said, we're kind of overlooking them in, until there's a crisis. So mm -hmm. my mission to my madness is to empower and educate baby boomers and their parents to know that you can uh, make a difference in the next chapter of your life. You can um, avoid or eliminate emotional, physical, financial stress. And I felt like the platform best suited for this were the live events in big places big with places. lots of people. And um, I've always, <laughs> this is funny, I've always wanted to be a model since I was 13 years old and I never did. Um, but at age 67, I feel like I'm going to be the model for the senior industry of how you can achieve and, and enjoy the, this next chapter. I'm on Medicare, I'm on Social Security, <laughs> and I'm having fun. <laughs> you are the best model ever. You're the best spokesperson ever that I've ever Thank met you. on this topic. You know, I met you at Carnegie Hall last year. Right. For the first time, and I'm so ex excited and glad that we, we did meet. So sometimes what you have or what you're doing, so like I said, she took her her real estate and it it kind of collided with now a mission or a passion of hers so if you're thinking about having a business or you have a business and then you have something else over here and you're not sure how to make 
it all worked together, you know, talk to Tamisa. She, she might be able to tell you, listen, this is how I was able to pull these two things together because um, sometimes we have a job and we have a business and we, we're trying to keep everything separate and we're trying to keep keep parts of our lives um, kind of sterile, sterilized from each other. And no, you came out, you wrote a book, you said, this is what happened to me in my life. And now I use what I know with my experience to create a better world. And, and it doesn't hurt to have been an Air Force brat that moves around the block or around the world and can do it efficiently. Uh, we moved about every two years all my life growing up. And so moving to me isn't as stressful feeling as it is to most people. So I can- To me, bring... yeah. I don't ever want to move again. <laughs> a okay. lot of people don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so putting all that together, um, it takes a team uh, it used to uh, it used to take a village to raise us. Now we say it takes a team to kind of move forward. And anybody that's out there looking to go into business, just pull. You're right. Pull from all your pluses and see what what you put in a pile. And you can make anything out of nothing or and you can make something out of anything. So just yeah. go for it. Get out there and be the spokesperson for what you love and what's your passion. Yeah. So um, how can we get your book? It is on Amazon. Um, it's Smart Living for Seniors, How to Make the Best of the Rest. It is on Amazon. And uh, I and do need to get story. an ebook. Pardon me? You tell your story in the book? I tell my story. I give tips on how to get started, where to start, how to make it fun. Um, and then there's just a lot of different stories inside there about um, different aspects about the options and some poems and it just kind of is a more of a lighthearted way to look at what are you going to do next? <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know what, why, why bother doing it if you can't find a fun in doing it? Right. If it's not fun, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love you to me. this is why I need to hang around you always because you are, um, so youthful in everything you do in your appearance. And I mean, Look at you. You're you're speaking all over the stages, all over the country. You're going on television. You know, most people at 67, they're like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. No, no. you're just making the best of the rest <laughs> for you. So what do your kids think about all of this that you're doing? You know, I think they used to be a little bit embarrassed by me, but now they've just embraced it and they're they're okay with it. They share my post and they're, you know, all about it. So yay, thank you guys. <laughs> I, I, ha I have a firefighter and a former Marine, and I tell you, I couldn't be more proud of them and three grandkids that are just uh, just a passion. So um, you just got to keep on enjoying every bit of it. We all have our adversities and ha hey, this pandemic has created, you know, good and bad. But I think a lot of people are coming out on the other side of it going, hey, we got to think differently and and what's most important and our family is most important. Yes. And taking care of every member of the family, which is, um, you know, again, don't just focus on if you have children and you're focusing on your kids, really focus on your parents. Because my mom lives with, well, she's staying with me because of the pandemic. Um, she she lives in Trinidad, but she uh, came up here for, for something and then the lockdown hit and She's just, she's stuck with me. <laughs> so, and I am, I am um, really enjoying having her here. But th at the same time, I noticed that she's having some memory challenges. And so it's, it's about really trying to enjoy the time that we have together with the vibrant, vital woman that she is now, because she is having some challenges with her memory and, and what, uh, and some things that are that are happening and I, I can see it happening and I know that it's it's not gonna get better and better and better as she gets older and older. So I am so thankful for the time because otherwise she lives in Trinidad, I live up here, we don't get to see each other. So uh, the pandemic has given me an opportunity to spend all this time with her since December of last year. So that, that is awesome. And I tell you, video things, have little conversations and talk about them, have her write down thoughts and memories. Uh, my mom uh, <clears throat> suffered and died of Alzheimer's after 14 years. The last mm -hmm. four years, she did not know who I was. 
but I knew who she was and I could still share stories with her. And some of the stories she would share were from old memories that she still had because Alzheimer's kind of reverses, you know, takes it care goes, of, takes, yeah, it goes backwards. Newer so she, things and thoughts, yeah. She, she would be telling stories about things that She'd never shared with me, but it was such a blessing to finally hear those. Even mm -hmm. though we were in this horrible situation with Alzheimer's, I had never heard those stories. It was such a joy. And so I, I just encourage everyone out there, especially if you have uh, loved ones with dementia, video stuff and get just jot down and play and have fun and have lots of music because the Live Inside is a charity about um, Alzheimer's and memory and music. And it can bring back a lot of um, uh, memories and activity in the brain of someone that is suffering with Alzheimer's. So yeah, so, um, she loves to play puzzles. She loves to do puzzles and Sudoku and stuff. So she spends a lot of time doing those things. <laughs> to, yeah. just, keep, but, keeping that brain going. <laughs> to keep that brain going. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm so thankful of the the time that I have to spend with her um, that we didn't have, and the time my children get to know her because again, she doesn't live in this country. So they have time to, to spend, to get to know her. Um, at, when she goes back, I don't know when we're going to see her again. So. So what a blessing the pandemic has cr for in creating yeah, that. For that, your that has been, definitely been a blessing um, that I counted as a blessing that she's, yeah. she's here and helping me out and stuff. So I, I, I love that. Uh, so guys really, you know, Look again, the agency, if you're having challenges with your parents health-wise, just, just trying to find ways to, to help them out at this time of their lives. Um, go to the area, I, have, I wrote it down, area agency on aging. <laughs> it's a hard one, but they can also just text okay. my number. Te they can text SMART to that number Let that me you put gave it back them. Up there. Yep, text. Yeah, and I can help them get steered to the right in Location the right in direction. Yeah. Please contact Tomisa because you know this is this is what she does. This is what she's doing. <clears throat> and if you need to relocate your parents, if they need to downsize, if you need to find space for them, if you need a home for them, she is a realtor in addition to all this wonderful marvelousness that she's doing traveling the country and being all awesome. But she can help you find the right home, the right um, place for them so that so that you can feel comfortable leaving them where they are. Because like Tomisa said, falls are the number one hazards for seniors falling down. What did you say? One out of two? One out of two will die in the first 12 will months. Die in the first 12 months after experiencing a fall. So we don't want to have any dangerous situations. They may love their house. They may think, you know, this is the, but their house could be a, a challenge for them. So. And I one last thing, that. Alicia, I'll say uh, many of your viewers are from across the country. And because I'm in Arizona it does not mean um, I can't help them uh, in any, any state. I have referral business with realtors that are real estate specialist for seniors mm -hmm. and as senior move managers, which I'm certified in and connect with other senior move managers in different states so they can have the whole process taken care of and, and really simplify everything. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Have a plan. What is plan again? Prepare in advance, let your desires be known, acknowledge your safety concerns, and never give up that youthful heart and mind. Yay! <laughs> have a plan for your aging parents. Sit down and have that difficult conversation, you know, have that conversation with them so that you can be prepared and not get that call in the middle of the night that is a, the scariest call and then have to rush to, to, now try to figure out what to do because you've already set a plan in place for them. So Tomisa, if you have any questions on senior, on seniors and how they're living and how, you know, just reach out to Tomisa again. We'll have a chat. <laughs> have a chat with her. Have a chat. There it is. Text the word. I put work. Text the word smart to 602-456-1976. So text, not the work, but the word. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm 
typing challenge while I'm trying to listen at the same time. So I'm multitasking. <laughs> anyway, I think so, you're doing a great job and this is a great platform. So kudos you. to you for putting it together. Thank you, because I think that in the small business community, we really need to support one another to grow. Like Lisa said in the in the first uh, part of this package, if we can support one another, we'll all grow um, faster, especially in these times in this pandemic. Sometimes we don't not, not necessarily have the money to spend that we did before, but we can have conversations, we can share our knowledge with each other, we can share resources with each other, um, and that can help everybody um, sort of, you know, what it says, a rising tide lifts all boats. We can be that rising tide that lifts all the boats, lifts all of us up. So Small Business Saturday, shout out. Um, join our community at facebook.com slash groups slash Small Business Saturday shout outs. Every Saturday, as long as I have a guest that books in, we will be here doing our little small businesses. So anything else you want to share before we close up, Miss Tomisa? I just want to say, make it the best of the rest and keep that youthful mind over aging matters because it does. Thank you. Mwah, mwah. I appreciate mwah, mwah. you. Virtual hug. <laughs> <laughs> well, virtual hug, not only because we are like, not only because of the pandemic, but you're in Arizona and I'm in Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> so we have to virtually hug. All right. Okay, hon. Thanks for the fun. Thank you so much. Bye. So next week, actually, we do have a couple other businesses that we're going to highlight next week on Small Business Saturday. Shout out. Um, I am so thankful for those of you who joined and who left comments. And, you know, if this was helpful to you, leave a comment, like, share. Um, if you're on Facebook, if you're on, sorry, YouTube, subscribe. If you're on Facebook, Come and join us in our community so that you can also meet great people like Tomisa and Lisa Sussman and really find a way to support their movements and their efforts as they will also support yours. So I am Alicia Khoury and I thank you so much for joining me today. And again, join us. Small Business Saturday shout out. Take care, everybody. Bye.